Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a pleomorphic adenoma of the parotid gland and I'm just going to outline the tumour here. This is a fairly well demarcated tumour nodule. In some areas, for example near this inferior aspect, there is a fibrous capsule around it, but in other areas it's just well demarcated. So adjacent to this nodule on the right side, we can see some lobules of normal salivary gland parenchyma. And then in other areas, as I'm outlining here, we can see a lot of adipose tissue. If you're wondering what this is, this is a small reactive lymph node. Let's first have a quick recap of normal salivary gland histology. And we can see that the salivary gland parenchyma is thrown into these lobules which are surrounded by some adipose tissue. Within the lobules, we have these grape-like acina structures or acini. They look like bunches of grapes and they are composed of acina cells with these peripheral rounded nuclei and a lot of basophilic material or coarse granular material in the cytoplasm. This is where the salivary enzymes live. Now, these SNI will discharge their contents into the small intralobular ducts and subsequently these will then empty their contents into the larger interlobular ducts. So here we have the interface between the normal salivary gland and the tumour and so at low magnification the tumour appears very blue-grey and this is because there is abundant myxoid stroma. When we use the term myxoid in microscopy, we usually mean this kind of translucent bluish-grey appearance. And this is due to stromal matrix material or extracellular matrix. And in other areas, for example here, we can see that the stroma has a chondroid appearance looking like mature cartilage. So putting together the myxoid areas and the chondroid areas, we call this a chondromyxoid stroma. In addition to this chondromyxoid stroma, we can see that there are many cells and these cells form a variety of structures. For example, in this area, we can see tubule formation. The tubules appear to be lined by an inner layer of cells these are known as the epithelial cells, and then these are surrounded by an outer layer of cells, which are the myoepithelial cells. So we can see some bilayered tubular structures here, and in other areas, the cells seem to just melt into the stroma, for example here, and these cells in the stroma are also derived from myoepithelial cells. So we can see that the shape of the cells is a little bit different when they are in this myxoid stroma. The cells tend to have these kind of tapering cytoplasmic processes and sometimes they are very spindle in shape where the nuclei are quite slender, for example here and here, and elongated. Pleomorphic adenomas are one of the commonest benign tumours in salivary glands and they often occur in the parotid gland, such as you see in this case. And in this particular tumour, in some areas, we can actually see a fibrous capsule. However, in other areas, there is no definite discernible capsule, for example here. And sometimes you can have nodules of tumour poking out of the original main mass. This is the reason why pleomorphic adenomas need to be excised with a little bit of a margin of surrounding normal tissue. Otherwise, it is possible to actually leave some parts of the tumour behind and this can then cause a recurrence or even malignant transformation in later years. When pleomorphic adenomas undergo malignant transformation, the diagnosis is carcinoma X pleomorphic adenoma. Let's have a very quick look at the gross appearance. And for this, I am in the gastrointestinal tract chapter of our online virtual pathology museum. And let me just click on the pleomorphic adenoma icon. And here is the virtual specimen. 
So this is the tumor. Again, it is very sharply demarcated. And this is the lobulated appearance of the normal slivery gland parenchyma. So you can see the lobulated appearance. And here is the tumor. And as we look into the tumor, we can see that it has a slightly heterogeneous cut surface. Some of these paler, whiter areas are likely to represent areas that are richer in the chondroid matrix. If you would like full access to our online virtual pathology museum with more than 700 virtual specimens, you simply need to register for PathWeb. Registration is free and you can find the link in the video description. In summary, we have here a virtual microscopic slide of a pleomorphic adenoma. This is a well-circumscribed partially encapsulated tumor. And we can see that there is a chondromyxoid stroma with chondroid areas, with blue-gray myxoid areas. And there are also two cellular components that form tubules and nests. The inner lining cells are the epithelial cells. The outer lining cells are the myoepithelial cells. And most of the cells that we see in the chondroid stroma are the myoepithelial cells. There is no evidence of malignant transformation in this case. Thank you.